Welcome to this video. Today I'm going to walk you through how to install Linux on your computer and I will be listing important links down below in the notes down in the video description so make sure you follow along down below as well as you will need a USB or flash drive in order to to do this make sure that there is nothing important on that USB uh, flash drive because this is going to completely delete everything that's on it so please be aware of that and so what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to install Linux Mint. However, if you are going to install a different distribution or a different version of Linux that will still work with these steps, uh, so please be aware of that as well. The first thing I'm going to do is show you where you can download Linux Mint. And so again, this link will be down below in the notes. You'll notice here that we have three different versions available with 32 or 64 bit. The main difference between these three is this bottom one is the most lightweight and the cinnamon uh, option is the most demanding. So if you have an older computer that you're installing Linux on, I would recommend going with the bottom one. If your computer is more recent, then you could go with cinnamon. Uh, Mate is kind of the middle option. And so the computer I'm installing Linux on today is actually a little bit older. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this bottom option and do 64-bit. And then you're going to get a list of options as far as where you can download it. Just find a location near you. Uh, if you're in the USA, usually the James Madison University is a pretty quick download. You just click on it and it will begin to uh, download Linux Mint. Now the second bit of software that we're going to need is the Universal USB Installer, which you can get to this page again if you go down below to the notes down in the video description. There is a link to this page and you'll just want to scroll down right here to where it says download you will want to go ahead and click on that and download this piece of software as well once you have both the linux version you're using as well as the universal usb installer downloaded go ahead and open up the universal usb installer and you'll have to click on i agree now what you do here is you want to select what distribution or version of Linux that you're going to be installing. So again, today I'm going to be doing Linux Mint. You'll select whichever one you're doing. And then the next thing you want to do is click on Browse and select the version of Linux that you downloaded just moments ago. And then once you've done that, make sure that your USB drive is plugged into your computer because what you'll need to do is go ahead and select it. And so I'm going to go ahead and select uh, my USB or flash drive. And then for formatting, I'm just going to do FAT32. Again, please be aware this is going to erase everything off of your USB or flash drive. So please, again, make sure there's nothing important on it. I'm going to go ahead and click on Create. And then click on Yes. And then this can take a little bit of time. You just want to make sure you let it run until it's fully, completely finished. Once you get a menu like this, you will know that it is completed. And so you can go ahead and just hit close. And we are now ready to start installing Linux on the computer. What you'll need to do is take your USB thumb drive and plug it into whichever computer it is that you will be installing Linux onto. And so if it's a different computer, at this point you want to go ahead and eject your thumb drive and plug it into that computer. Make sure that if it is a different computer, that that computer is turned off and then plug it in. If it's this current computer that you've been using up until this point, what you'll need to do is restart the computer because we need to access the boot menu in order to tell the computer to boot from the USB thumb drive. Now this is where things get just a little bit tricky because every computer is just a little bit different, but the concept is the same. Basically what you need to do is get into your boot options so that way you can tell the motherboard to boot from the USB drive instead of the drive that's in the computer. Now I could not record this, that's why I took pictures, so I apologize for the quality. But this way you can still see the menus that I was able to go through. And so I'm using an HP laptop. To get to this menu, I did hit escape. So what I did is I restarted the computer, I turned it on. And I started tapping escape, the escape key, over and over and over again until this menu came up. So what I would do on your computer, if you don't know what key to press, try escape. That's a common one. Uh, the delete button is also common. F12, 
F1, F2, F3. It's usually one of those. If none of those work, you may need to go to the manufacturer's website of your computer specifically to find out which key you need to press to get to the boot options. But once you're there, uh, what you'll need to do is select the option to, to, to tell the motherboard what option to boot from. So on this menu, it's F9. And after I pressed F9, the following menu came up on my screen, the one you're looking at right now. And you'll notice that the fourth option down says USB hard drive. That is the USB thumb drive that I have plugged into the computer. So I just used the down arrow to go down to it. So it's selected. And then I pressed enter. And then after hitting enter, I waited a few seconds and the following menu came up on my screen. You'll notice the top option says start Linux Mint. I just made sure it was selected and then hit enter and then just waited until it completely booted in. Now once you have fully booted in, we're here in Linux Mint but it is not yet installed and so what you need to do is come over here to where it says install Linux Mint and just double click on it. And basically all you do at this point is just follow the menus. It's pretty easy for the most part. You just follow the directions. And so I'm not going to go over everything here, but I'm going to skip ahead here just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Once you get to this menu to have the option to install third-party software to support graphics, Wi-Fi, and other hardware and other features, that is optional. I am not going to check this box, but you do have the option to do so if you'd like to. So I'm going to go ahead and skip it and just hit continue. And then once you get to this menu, you will have a few different options. Now, one option that's not showing up here that you may have if you're installing it on a Windows computer is you may have an option to keep the Windows installation you already have and install Linux along with that. So that way you can use both Windows and Linux on your computer. Or you can go with the option that I'm going with and having only Linux on the computer. And then you also have the option to encrypt the uh, partition the installation as well and so to do so you just check that box and then once you've done that you can go ahead and click on install now if a menu like this pops up you'll just want to go ahead and click on continue once you get to this menu you will want to just fill everything out here including a password you will have the option to encrypt the home folder for additional security and then once you have all this filled out you can go ahead and just click on continue once you get a menu like this, you'll know that the installation has completed. You'll just want to go ahead and click on Restart Now. Once you're fully logged back into your new installation, it will pop up a little welcome message to help you get started. Uh, as far as the installation, you're pretty much complete, but I do recommend that you go over to the First Steps tab. And from here, you will have the option to make sure your drivers are taken care of, as well as I would recommend double checking the update manager just because you want to make sure everything's up to date uh, just for security reasons so you can just click on launch to check for any updates that are needed as well as any system settings or software that you need to install you can do all that from here but as far as the installation you are good and ready to go if you have any comments or questions please post them down below and as always thank you very much for watching this video I hope you have a great day